starting in the late 1970s with Mary Enig, an undersung hero who was the first person to find out that, uh, or one of the first people who found out that hydrogenated oils, the backbone of Crisco and margarine, that actually they contained trans fats and trans fats were harmful. They caused heart disease. Also Fred Kumaro, who spent his entire career fighting trans fats. Um, and then later in the story came Walter Willett. But um, this led to effectively in the US to a ban on trans fats. I think in, the, in Europe, there's just a, a severe limit on them. But effectively, we, it was no longer possible to use these hydrogenated oils because of this side effect of the trans fats that they produced. Well, what replaced trans fats? You still had this basic problem, which is that oils are unstable. They go rancid, they oxidize. Uh, and so they weren't really, you can't, you can't use, you can't make a shelf-stable product out of them. You can't make cookies if the, you know, the Oreo cookie in the middle is greasy and, and dribbling, up, <laughs> dribbling on the shelf. That doesn't work. All of those products had hydrogenated oil. So what were food industry manufacturers going to replace them with? Well, they did a number of things. Um, they tried to use genetically modified soybeans in order to create oils that produced um, a lesser amount of the fatty acids that tended to oxidize. They, you, they switched, they started producing more sunflower oil, which also has lower, has, is less um, prone to oxidation. And this is not on this uh, slide, but they started to use a lot of palm oil because that's very high in saturates um, and to some extent coconut oil, but that's more expensive. But in many cases, they just reverted back to using regular old oils. One of the things that I discovered in doing my research was um, that this was a huge problem, especially in food service operations. So, uh, you know, they started just using regular oils in fryers, in restaurants. Um, and this was something, you know, pre previously they had used hydrogenated oils, which were stable. Now they had regular oils and, uh, I learned about this from um, somebody who worked, a high-level employee of Loder's Crocklin, and he told me that when this, this transformation took place, that trans fats were out, regular oils were back in, he said it was a huge problem for like McDonald's and Burger King that the oils were oxidizing, and their oxidation products included things like polymers, which is like a paint-like substance, and they were having this, this kind of sticky paint-like substance build up on the walls, they had to get extra strong cleaning solutions to get it off. Just imagine what was happening in the lungs of the workers standing over these fryers. When I say oxidation products, what do I mean? This polyunsaturated oil, so each one of those double bonds, those little equal sign, each one of those can open up and attach to an oxidant. That's oxidation. And then oxidation drives inflammation. So you have these heated oils in restaurants and they were finding that there were so many oxidation, highly unstable oxidation products on the workers' uniforms that when they would take them in their, dry, in their little truck to the dryer, to the laundromat, they would burst into flames in the back of the truck. They would just spontaneously burst into flames. And then even after they had been cleaned in the washing machine, they would burst into flames again in the heat of the dryer. 